And I'm, my name is Brandon Greenway, and this is my debate team, Rachel Argento, Esther Yee, Chad Tate, and Kayla Skeen. And we are arguing that privacy is of more importance than national security. So some of the main points we'll be speaking on today is that is the security implemented really working? Human rights for citizens, how the government has already overstepped, the Patriot Act, and beyond national security. So some of the points I'm gonna start off with talking on is mainly with whether security is really working. So one of the biggest parts of a debate like this is clearly in relations to 9-11, one of the biggest ter ter terrorist attacks on US soil. And one of the biggest outcomes from that was the TSA within airports to ensure safety within flights and things like that. But the bigger question is whether the TSA is effective at all. There was a study done where they sent in um, agents who were carrying fake bombs or things that would have been triggered to test whether the security was working. And the first time they sent people through, 90% made it through with this paraphernalia. And then the second time they sent through 70%. They sent 10 people and it was nine out of 10 and seven out of 10, which is just proof that some of the reasons that we've had so far are not helping out or working. So security is a, like a human right that is given and the Fourth Amendment also protects us with our privacy in our homes. The Fourth Amendment states that the right of people is to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. And you see that a lot in some areas that people get like searched and seized, but our Fourth Amendment protects us. The NSA also has no right to collect our information on citizens without our consent. Privacy is clearly stated again in the Fourth Amendment, and John Locke was the spiritual father of democracies, and he believed that all people are born with the God-given rights for privacy and some other liberties. The government has abused their power and invaded our privacy since technology first came about. They have monitored our daily conversations and activities. For instance, Alexa. In 2017, she recorded a murder case about a man killing his friend. There have been many, there have been a lot of instances where Alexa has recorded homicides and murders. Um, Alexa records daily conversations without consent. Um, there is no stopping the government from listening to our conversations unless we basically stop using technology altogether or move out of the U.S. But they'll still be able to monitor us. All right, the Patriot Act. <clears throat> it was passed just six weeks after September 11th, due directly by by a panic Congress in a direct response to the terrorist attacks. It vastly expanded the government's ability to spy on citizens while also reducing the power of the judicial branch for checks and balances. While the bill was fast-tracked through Congress, neither discussions nor amendments were allowed, and also the Bush administration implied that those who challenged the bill would be blamed for any further attacks that may happen. Legislators were required to make an immediate yay or nay decision. And in Section 215 of the Patriot Act, allows the FBI to force anyone at all, including doctors, universities, internet service providers, to turn over the records on their clients and, and customers while also forcing them from disclosing the search to anyone. The FBI no longer has to show probable cause, which provides a backdoor to the Fourth Amendment require, that the Fourth Amendment requires, and judicial oversight is non-existent. Judges no longer have the authority to reject those proposed warrants. Also, warrants can be done anywhere throughout the country, and you can get the warrant outside of jurisdictions. Patriot Act provides Attorney General with the overwhelming power to order the detention of non-citizens based on reasonable grounds to believe that persons of the country 30 seconds. Based on reasonable grounds to believe in, they can, if people don't have a country to claim them, they, they can detain them indefinitely. Uh, we'd like to also end our opening statement, <laughs> excuse me, with a quote that we think will speak a lot and people can relate with by E.A. Bouchonary. 
It was, you know something is wrong when the de government declares opening someone else's mail is a felony, but your internet activity is fair game for data collecting. Thank you. Thank you. Team two, opening uh, statements. How y'all doing, this is team two. I'm Jack Butler, this is Victoria, Kendra, Gracie, and Julie. And we're talking about how national security is more important than individual privacy. The National Security Agency is the intelligent agency of the United States Department of Defense. The NSA is responsible for global monitoring, the collection and processing of information, and data of foreign intelligence and counterintelligence purposes. National, secu national security became increasingly more important during the Cold War and the fight against Congress in the United States. The government used the NSA to track and monitor communists living in the United States during the Cold War. The war on terror would eventually escalate, escalate during the um, Trade Tower attacks on September 11, 2001. These situations reinforced the idea that national security is more important than individual privacy there have been in instances where attacks have been stopped because of diligent monitoring and surveillance. Since the United States is such a great world power, we often have conflicts with other countries that leave us susceptible to terror attacks. Fo following the attacks on 9-11, the United States activated the Patriot Act. This act gives federal officials greater authority in tracking and intercepting communication both for purposes of law enforcement and foreign Foreign Intelligence Gathering. Under the Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, the United States government engaged in warrantless surveillance of Americans and foreigners, phone calls, text messages, and emails to have greater security for our nation. Since we are currently at war in our state of uh, living in this nation, it is imperative for the government to have access to certain people personal information, phone calls, and texts because you never know what somebody might do in a time of conflict and you, you should always be prepared for anything. Unless the nation is living in a time of great peace and non-conflict, governments should always have strict national surveillance. In 2012, the FBI prevented a bombing of a bridge in Cleveland, Ohio because they intercepted missions. Uh, messages between assailants and uh, people overseas. With, um, and uh, on December 15th, I mean on December of 2015, 14 people were killed and two, 22 others were seriously injured in a mass shooting terrorist attack and an attempted bombing in Inland Regional Center in San Bernardino, California. The FBI requested that Apple access encrypted data on the iPhone used by one of the terrorists at the attack, but Apple denied access because if they were to open, if they were to open up this phone, it would cause a chilling effect that would allow other people to gain access to other phones in different situations that wouldn't necessarily be the greatest outcome for that situation. Um, so. With Apple denying the FBI access, this allowed more lives to be taken, and this allowed there to be a greater threat to the safety of American citizens. A lot of your private information is already on websites and on the dark web, because when you sign into credit cards and all that, your information is on the internet to be taken already. So many United States citizens don't understand that when you sign terms and agreements, and conditions, you are giving up some of your rights to your personal information because if you don't even read the terms and conditions, you're probably not that much concerned about your individual privacy because you would know that most of it is being taken away. Um, another point that we want to make, uh, we want to offer another point of view uh, about uh, some of the wars that the um, U.S. would involve in the recent years, for example, the Afghanistan wars, or the wars that happened in, in Iran and in Iraq. And uh, some data, like, I want to show how, um, um, how basically uh, the, it started all like for, for national security issues because after 9-11, everyone was 
uh, scared about uh, potential terroristic attacks and uh, it led to some economic benefit for uh, the US government and the US system. Things like in 1970, just the 45% of the uh, oil and petroleum was managed by uh, the US government. Instead, right now, uh, the US government has a much more profitable uh, tariff uh, for, the, um, for the petroleum and the oil compared, for example, with Europe. All right. Now we have a two minute break. You guys can talk amongst each other and then we will go into rebuttals. So we've been talking national security, but I think we need to talk personal security too, because with the increasing digitization of every single aspect of our lives, it's becoming increasingly easier for companies and the government to mine our personal data. This digitization of our re reality is sending us down a scary, slippery slope and into a world in which every aspect of our being is being monitored by corporations. And these corporations are also learning how to take advantage of this, and they are finding ways to make us comply. For example, the John Hancock Company, which is an insurance company, um, they announced that they will be giving discounts to, uh, on health insurance for anyone that will wear Fitbit and is willing to give up their data. You can opt out, but, I mean, basically, you can't get their insurance without this Fitbit and without them tracking your data, which is fine on the health aspect because it's health insurance, but when you get to like all the other things that Fitbit tracks, they have access to that too, like your location at all times. And I mean, if they're doing this now, policies like this are becoming more and more prevalent. And it's not gonna be long before corporations and the government require you to plug into spy networks just to receive access to services as essential as welfare and getting a job. Um, I'd also like to go back to FISA. It's Article 702. And in this it states, however it additionally permits targeting of any foreigner abroad for foreign intelligence purposes. And this is, includes any information that relates to the conduct of the foreign affairs of the United States. Of the United States. Such an overbroad category is sufficiently sweeping to permanent surveillance of individuals on the basis of commonplace activities. It also states 
that they have the right to look into any of the personal information of somebody who is protesting outside of a U.S. embassy, supporting a human rights group, or writing about international uh, writing about international relations or global economics. They get more access to their personal uh, endeavors than what they normally would, which right there is a pretty obvious breach of privacy that is stated in FISA. Another thing is, whenever we give out our personal data to like companies and like Netflix and other, with our credit card information or addresses, we are picking and choosing what companies get our information. So it's like you're not giving your information at one time to every single company. Like if you just get Netflix, you're just getting your credit card information to Netflix at that time. So it's not like the whole world and the whole like nation gets to be like, oh look, this is her credit card. It's all about who you're picking and choosing to give that information to. Um, we've also spoken a lot about how after the terrorist attacks, and they mentioned that there was the increase in security and how many terrorist attacks it has stopped, but it also really hasn't. As back in 2016, as many of you I'm sure heard of was on national news, the Orlando nightclub shooting, which was done within correlation to ISIS, and they got into the country without the problem and somehow had no surveillance, even though they did have contact with ISIS. And then as well as in October of 2017, where there was a man who rented a Home Depot truck and drove through New York City going towards the memorial for the Trade Center and ended up running over, and I believe it was killing eight people, but he hit or injured more than that. And he was also in relation to ISIS. So all this invasion of privacy that is occurring, that's supposedly helping our security more, isn't really stopping as much as it shows. Based on what has occurred since 9-11, there has been countless terrorist attacks to still speak towards that. And the fact that the looking into our phone or our emails, much like my quote stated earlier, saying that going through your mail is illegal, but going through my emails is not. So I think that just things like that have clearly proven that the national security is not working and privacy needs to be seen as more beneficial than going through our personal emails. Another thing is that any idea that oh, we think that our security is being increased, as Brandon said, like the IRS tax authorities have misused their power over citizens, just for example, like the more power you are given, it's also like the more ability you have to abuse that potential power. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, and just another point that I wanted to add on since I did find out we had 30 seconds left would be uh, also with Boston. That was another one exactly related with the same group of ISIS terrorists, and those three almost, they were all related to ISIS, which are basically connected through the same organization, and none of the three were able to stop, and Boston was a huge bomb. So i just like to address that maybe the precautions being taken or not with the right steps. All right, team two, your rebuttal. <laughs> So we would just like to point out that we are in a war and different rules apply to the government and its citizens in times of war. And we are currently in the midst of the war on terror. To reduce the chances of terrorists entering America, some loss of privacy is required and tighter security measures are uh, need to be handed. True, these tactics affect the innocent as well as the guilty, but when the incredibly hard to detect lone wolf terrorist is the assailant of choice. Casting a wider net via internet surveillance makes a much more effective security measure. Also, too, it is the government's job to secure its citizens' general welfare. The, war, the words general welfare appear twice in the U.S. Constitution as securing general welfare, whereas privacy is only defended in the amendments, national security should be prioritized over any uh, concerns for personal privacy, namely the common good outweigh personal preference in this case, the common good does include surveillance to prevent attacks against Americans or on American soil from being carried out. Better intelligence and security measures will help prevent the loss of life. Is that not worthwhile, a worthwhile reason to allow for reduced privacy? Okay, and also uh, things like Fitbit and Netflix were mentioned before that obviously come with the invention of like the internet and advancements in technology, but uh, with this kind of thing, it we believe that it's individual responsibility to understand that the consequences that come with the internet and um, participating and using 
internet and social media apps. Um, for example, once you make something public and put it online that was private, it is always going to be public. This is just general knowledge that once you put something on the internet, it's no longer your private information. It's out there for everyone to see and can't be taken away. You can delete it, but um, regardless, the information is always going to be out there and can be found if um, dug deep enough. Um, also mentioned was the Fourth Amendment, but the Fourth Amendment stops the police and other government agents from searching citizens in the property without probable cause. Uh, the government's not going to look into, for example, my phone networking for no reason. If they have probable cause, that's when they're going to take things further and look into it. Um, also, you mentioned the Patriot Act that happened after the 9-11. Um, the majority of the Senate voted for the Patriot Act and only one Senate did not. Senate did not. So that obviously shows that um, the Patriot Act was a good idea as the majority did vote for it, not against it. Um, lastly, the power of the United States. The, the power that the United States has compared to other countries is so much more and it requires so much more protection than you would need, for example, in New Zealand, which is a tiny little country. Another thing we'd like to point out, like you guys brought up, the Orlando uh, attack from ISIS, national security enables a florist and inclusive society. The water net of national security measures can identify xenophobes and racially or religiously motivated criminals and acts act against them before harm is, harm is caused to others for a better quality of life. Um, as for those who seek ostracized and harm, they are apprehended and the hateful teachings they spread are removed from social media platforms and websites. Better surveillance might have prevented that shooting that happened in 2016 or the 2017 Minnesota mosque bombing. National security and surveillance offers a great public protection, especially for minorities as well. And then also too, as you guys spoke about like the Fitbit and everything, if you keep giving consent, you're basically giving up your rights to privacy as well. So you're allowing them to give probable cause to look into it. So if you're searching up how to make a bomb or homemade bombs or things like that, then of course that's gonna give probable cause for us to look into what you were doing to make sure that we are all protected. Forty five seconds. Um, also, when it comes to public figures versus private figures, um, it's a lot different for um, regular individual citizens as opposed to public figures, um, such as Hillary Clinton, because she is a public figure, her privacy rights are considered different than what um, private individual rights are. So that has to be taken into consideration too, um, that everyday citizens, they're not gonna have the same privacy rights as public figures. <laughs> All right, um, another two minute break, and then we'll go into concluding remarks. You have three minutes for concluding remarks. So, like, I'm thinking about the
something that I have to grade between now and like next week. Right. And I was like, wait, some of these things aren't even turned in yet. Okay, that's time. <clears throat> Team one, three minutes for concluding remarks. All right, I'd like to start off by addressing the, uh, the probable cause comment. And I would like to remind you that uh, judicial oversight is non existent through the Patriot Act. Whether there's probable cause or not, judges do not have the authority to reject proposed warrants. So there's no checks and balances in that. I can make up a statement of any of whatever I'd like. If I was if I was law enforcement or FBI or what I can make up a statement, anything I like or prove or provide no evidence and still be able to obtain a warrant to search through your private emails, your private text messages, your private phone calls, and there there's no one to there's no one to stop and say that it, there's no evidence for this. It's non-existent. So it provides the government with the ability to obtain all of your information in any case. Also with our closing remarks, we'd also like to speak on the idea of lone wolf terror, which was uh, discussed, as well as um, the access accessibility of the internet. So uh, it was spoken about that they use cell phones and things like that and access our private uh, information in order to cast a broader range and find more attacks. But the ones that were listed were lone wolf terror. It was one or two people. These weren't as uh, major or big a scale as 9-11 as it was scaled down because of things like TSA. And it's not preventing it through going through the privacy information. And it was also discussed about the internet um, taking play in that anything you put out there is public. But in modern day society, you cannot survive without the internet. And I think that that's just a general fact. I mean, in order to apply for jobs, do anything, stay in contact with people, you cannot live an internetless life. It's nearly impossible with how far our society's come. So we think that it's not fair to just say that what you put out is your responsibility because there's certain people that you cannot contact that you may have to reach out to from across the country or something like that. And it's not even saying as to whether something's inappropriate or along those lines, but it's like through a business transaction or something like that, things that have to happen. And then we'd also like to just close out, we'd like to close out our statement with a uh, quote from Benjamin Franklin. It's, uh, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Our country was based on freedom and we're essentially giving up that freedom by allowing them to hack into what is our private conversations and private information. Thank you. Team two, concluding remarks, three minutes. oversight of the government for its surveillance of foreign entities and individuals. Um, and then going back to your uh, comment about Alexa and how you mentioned how um, it reported murders, um, this is good information because the police, you know, are, would be able to catch the criminals. And also, it would, I mean, if you buy Alexa, like, and we've uh, heard many stories of Alexa and paying personal information, like it's your choice to have that in your house. Um, so national security is a small price to pay, meaning our individual, our individual privacy for something that could end up saving our lives in the end. And if we lived in a world with no national security, we would be in war all the time because we wouldn't know um, what threats were coming. And biological warfare very easily happens. And it was uh, recent that the Trump administration's national security strategy, released in December, warns threats to the U.S. homeland or biological threats the U.S. homeland are growing, and yet even as the report was being written, the White House Budget Office was proposing to cut off funding to the government's only biofence, uh, bio defense analysis and countermeasures centered in Fort District, uh, Maryland. Um, so, I mean, biological warfare is coming, it's just a matter of when and where, and without national, uh, national security, they can 
happen a lot faster. So we're going to leave you with this question. Would you rather live in a world that favors privacy and not monitor possible threats, or would you rather live in a world that is more concerned about people's safety? Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. That concludes our debate. All finished. So uh, remember today what is due before midnight.